Hello and welcome back to the channel. I am your host Edward Heim and in today's video I am going to do a still life painting demonstration. What you don't see that's just behind my painting panel is my shadow box. Uh, please refer to my prior video on how to make a cheap and easy shadow box. Inside I have my still life. It is a wine glass half full of water and a textured emerald green towel. I have my Fresnel studio light shining into my shadow box to give me an interesting light effect. After all, that's what's going to make the uh, painting interesting to look at. So I have some bright light and I have some deep shadows and you know transitions, of course. So this is the very beginning of the painting. I am coming in and I'm drawing, sketching with a washed out version of mostly asphalt and with a tiny touch of ultramarine blue. Uh, it's very thinned out with odorless mineral spirits. That makes it easy to, to draw these light fine lines. I could wipe it away if I chose to and it's very easy to paint over. And, uh, you know, it would ultimately dry very fast if for some reason you wanted to wait for that to set. But you can go right over it. That's what I, I ended up doing. The drawing is very important. It's a very critical step. I found out the hard way in my painting career that you really cannot rush the drawing component. It's slightly more forgiving than if you're going with a straight say mechanical pencil drawing because any mistakes you make in proportion size placement would be super glaring in said mechanical drawing you can kind of push the drawing around in painting but it makes it so much easier and gives a much better result if you really nail the drawing down as best you can as early as you can it's going to be your foundation in your you know whole masterpiece so, you know, just like with a house, if you had a weak foundation, you're going to have a weak structure on top. It will relieve a lot of frustration in your painting if you can get that drawing down packed right out of the gate. It's worth spending the extra time and retooling your drawing if necessary. If it was really off the rails, uh, you know, that would be the time to grab your rag with odorless mineral spirits, wipe off the whole drawing and start again. That's how important this is. And I cannot emphasize that enough. Going for basic shapes, proportion, symmetry, placement. You're getting your composition in. As we get away from what you're going to determine to be your central focal point, you can get looser and less structured, but I would caution you not to get overly sloppy. So we have a rough drawing placed down and we have what's really a mostly barren painting surface. It's a good idea to get color in as quickly as you can. At least that's how I do it. I just want to cover everything because I want to get, you know, painting tones as accurate as I can. I want colors, colors to then become as accurate as I can get them. And when you have the whole surface covered in paint in some form or another, the painting becomes easier to do. Also remember since it's oil paints, when you start layering up color, you really get the luminosity and those awesome oil painting effects in place early on. So you want to develop on that. Everything is developing. You're building on top of the prior layer and you can have as many as you want. Okay, so I got that color in, got some more darks. So I marked in some of, you know, highlight from the light on the cloth. And once I kind of have all that blocked in, I'm going to come back and really start to focus in on my glass. Because my glass is going to contain my 
central focal point, i.e. The, the light effect that we want, that we're going after. At least that's what I'm doing here. I'd recommend that you have a similar focus in your painting because ultimately it will yield a better painting. So we're painting from real life, obviously. So there's a lot going on in that glass. You have reflections, you have bending of light, you have haze, you have a, a crystalline effect, additional reflections bouncing all over the place. So this is the great mystery of painting things clear, what is clear. The clearness of the glass is bending and shaping light. It's also warping color and lines. So I'm just kind of hazing out my my focus, meaning, you know, blurring out my vision, closing my eyes a bit, because I don't want to get hung up on tiny little details and nuances right now. I want to block in colors and large shapes and then refine and build from there. And in this particular case, building means making things sharper, more clear, more defined. And that applies to everything that's going down. So shapes, colors, tones, temperature, lines, lights, darks, you name it. Kind of dance around back and forth, but you can't neglect any of those things. And if you see something you don't like, it is well within your power to take your artistic license and manipulate your painting however you wish. Don't be afraid to do that. It's your painting. You do whatever you want. So here I'm coming in now with darker paint. Start building up contrast. Start to make that glass and the subsequent highlights pop out. Everything can't be the same muted tone. It will be very one note. It won't be interesting to look at. So we got some darks on the outside, the inside. Shapes are being further defined. We're adding depth, dimension, the 3D-ness on a two-day surface. And what I like to do in all my still lifes is I like to darken all the corners. I want to frame in the painting. Think of it something like a rough rectangular oval shape, masking the edges, the most extreme outer edges and the corners, and then fading that inwards towards the painting because you're gonna guide the viewer to see what you want them to see. The human eye naturally can only focus in one place anyway at a time. So if you force the issue, you make it, you know, that much easier for the viewer to enjoy your masterpiece. So, kinda of jumped ahead a little bit. It's about a day of dry time, I came in, and I developed the glass further with lighter color and some sharp lines and highlights. And you can see what a difference that has made. 
there's still a lot of undefined areas, which we will get to. I also uncovered the bottom of the glass, the base, and painted that in to make that look better. I can thank my art coach for that one. Good, good suggestion. So now we're kind of working outwards in a rough spiral, I guess you could say, developing the painting from what you want the viewer to look at going out. And as you go out, it's more diffused, less defined, less intense, less sharpness, less contrast, more muted on your colors. And again, going back with lights and darks, developing shapes. You need to move something around, move it around. But you're always, you know, chiseling the stone, as it were, from a rough block to a, a more detailed and intricate carving. And we're doing that carving with our paintbrush and our paints and our medium of choice. So that section of the painting was very one note. It was dark, but very uninteresting and it bothered me. The towel that's in the still life composition has a subtle uh, you know, waffle weave texture to it. So I'm deliberately going to force the texture out a little bit more in this dark transition. One, to make the painting more interesting, and two, it was challenging to do, so that's how we get better. We, we push ourselves, so I'm going to make myself do that. And I was quite happy with the result. So by the end of this painting, there will be a photo of how the painting stands. Today is November 12th, and you can see how the painting looks. But for now, just stick to the video and watch the development process. So the color mixing will start to become a little more finicky as you're trying to capture what you're looking at. The green is very dark in the shadow because it's you know a fairly dark green to begin with, but in the darkness of sh the said shadow and the valleys of the texture it does become more challenging and I'm not going to break my back trying to to capture this photorealism for an area that isn't even in my central focal point area so it's okay to to get a little looser and get the suggestion of the, the, those shapes those diagonal lines and such the the the, the lights and darks that help me give that three-dimensional effect. You don't have to go crazy. I didn't. You be the judge. When you see this at the end, you could say, I like it, I don't like it. I would imagine most people will agree with me in that, you know, it gets the effect in efficiently as possible without going nuts. I don't like getting hung up in one area of a painting for, for days on end. If that's your thing, go for it. I don't really like doing that. So as the painting continues, we go from blurring out what we're looking at with our eyes, and now we want to start dialing in on nuances. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm starting to scrutinize sections of the painting, do a little area of a painting, and then move on to the next.
I apologize for the glare. I absolutely do not have the best studio lighting solution. One for my painting and two for filming videos as living in the apartment does not allow me to have the luxury of that level of control on my lighting. That's not an excuse, it's just the reality of my situation. I want to do eventually move and build a studio in my future home. This will be a lot better, so please bear with me. So I came back to this area and I realized it needed some adjustment on the shape and the lights and the darks. So that's what I'm building towards now. Also, if you have a lot of fresh, wet paint down an area, you might find it difficult to paint over it and with a sweeping color change. So you got two options. One, you can grab some paper towel or rag, your finger even, wipe the paint away, and then come back and put in the new color the new paint you want to put down or what I tend to do is because it's never really an emergency when I'm painting you know give it a day to just to set up two three days if you want it to be real touch dry that you want zero chance of color interaction but one day makes a huge difference coming back with multiple layers But you got, you got some options. It's not the end of the world. It never is in painting. This is supposed to be relaxing and pleasant. So again, because of the glare, it's hard to, to see what I'm doing. So last time I came with the dark, now in those other areas, I'm coming back with the lighter dark green and filling it in. The glare is washing that out, unfortunately. I should have moved the camera over but I didn't. So you have to wait to the end to see the final picture. So for now, just take my word on it. If anyone has any tips on how to film and bring down the glare levels, I'd be much appreciative of your shared knowledge and wisdom. I got windows by me that are causing said glare. Some of it's from the overhead light but the windows make it the worst, especially on a sunny day. Okay, so in that bottom left corner, you can kind of see the darks a little bit better. It's not glaring, but I'm still developing that. Bringing what I did in the top left down to the bottom left. Okay, so this is the next day. You can see how those wet blacks have kind of sunk in. That's just what happens with microchromatic black mixtures of asphaltum and ultramarine blue. We're going to fix that right now. So what I'm doing here is I'm coming back with straight medium. In my case, Neo McGill or Liquin, whatever you're using. Clean, clean, clean brush. And I'm taking the straight medium and I am brushing it down over the entire painting. You can see how it goes from a matte haze back to a luxurious wet look. This is kind of like oiling out a painting. If I was using something like a linseed stand oil medium, you would just come back with the clean medium on a clean brush and brush it on. You do the exact same thing with these synthetic mediums, which again, I'm a huge fan of. I find them to be way easier to work with and they're much more forgiving when it comes to fat over lean rules. Okay. 
And you can do this in multiple layers if you wanted to, and then glazing in with some transparent color mixed in, which I may or may not do. And then even if you do that, you can come back with paint again on top of those layers should you want to change something. You're not pigeonholed into you know, starting something and being unable to go back. At least not in my experience. And I am throwing additional medium down over the glass, the stem, and the surrounding area. And building in that up a little heavier. So now you can see the finished painting there. It uh, looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. You could see the waffle weave texture. I've kind of forced it out more because I wanted to take a dull area and make it a little more interesting. So let me know what you think. Was this video helpful? Did you learn anything? Would you have done something differently? I'd love to hear your comments one way or another. If you did find this video helpful, I would ask that you subscribe, like, and share. It greatly helps out the channel and I greatly appreciate it. So thank you for watching and have an excellent day. Thank you.